Jesus came to bring us a whole new way to live. Hi, I'm Father Cedric Pizania, the host of Live With Passion. I'm so glad that you tuned into the program. I want to talk to you about abundant life and the goodness of God. I'll read to you from Acts chapter 19. While Apollos was at Corinth, Paul passed through the upper country and he came to the city of Ephesus. There he found some disciples and he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said, no, we haven't even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. And he said, into what then were you baptized? And they said, into John's baptism. And Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance. And he told people to believe in the one who was to come after him, Jesus. And on hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when Paul laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them they spoke with tongues and they prophesied. There were about 12 of them in all. The purpose of my program is to help you to develop a personal relationship with God. And there's no deeper relationship with God than through the Holy Spirit. So this program is very important and I wanna share with you the, the riches and the grace of the Holy Spirit. I remember when I was a seminarian one time I was ministering at an African-American church in Chicago. This is the south side of Chicago. And I'd be out there in the pews and the priest would stand up there and he would say, God is good. And everybody would reply all the time. And then he would say all the time and people would reply, God is good. And that's the name of this series, that God is good all the time. And because God is good, he lavishes in his goodness. He pours out his Holy Spirit upon all people. I remember when he appeared to Moses, he said, I'm going to let my goodness pass before you. And he proclaimed his name. He said, the Lord, a God gracious, a God merciful, a God slow to anger, and a God rich in steadfast love. So the, the goodness of God is his characteristics. It's his graciousness, his love his mercy, and the goodness of God is his spirit being lavished upon all people. I remember when I was a youth minister, this is before I became ordained a priest, I was ministering in St. Louis, Missouri, and we had a group of people there, probably about 10 of us in a small group called Renew, and there were people, we were studying the Bible, and we were gathered because we wanted to learn more about our faith. I was a youth minister at the time and I was the leader of the small group. And I remember I was sitting there talking about the Holy Spirit and how the Spirit had touched my life and working in my life and leading me and comforting me and guiding me. And I'll never forget this woman sitting right across from me. You know, we were all studying the Bible, studying about the Holy Spirit. She looked at me and she said, Cedric, you're talking about the Holy Spirit how come we never hear this proclaimed from the pulpit? And who is this Holy Spirit you're talking about? <laughs> I saw such hunger in her. I saw such desire in her. She, she wanted to know who the Holy Spirit is. And I think she represents millions of people who have heard about the Holy Spirit but don't know who the Holy Spirit is. I remember one time I was talking to a woman and she said, Father, I'm stuck in my prayer life and nothing seems to be happening and just kind of going through the motions, same thing over and over again. And I said, well, you need to know about the Holy Spirit. And she looked at me with a big smile on her face. And she said, yes, Father, I want to know who the Holy Spirit is. Oh, and perhaps that's you. You're tuned into the program and yeah, you go to church and you believe in Jesus and you love God but you don't really know in a personal way who the Holy Spirit is. And that's exactly what was going on with the Ephesians. 
Paul came to Ephesus, by the way, this big Greek colony, Ephesus, big city, I've been there. Uh, the remains of Ephesus are still there. And he goes to the city and he finds some believers. Uh, remember, Christianity back then was brand new and he's on his second missionary journey, ends up in Ephesus. And so he says to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And the disciples said, no. <laughs> We haven't even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. He says, then what were you baptized into? And they said, John's baptism. Remember, John the Baptist was baptizing, calling people to repentance. And he, he informs them about the something more, the abundant life. And that's exactly what Jesus said. He said, I have come that you may have life and life abundant, something more than what we already have. So he informs them about the abundant life. He teaches them about the Holy Spirit, lays hands on them, and they begin to prophesy and speak in tongues. In other words, they receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit. And that's exactly what I want for you. I want you to receive through this program. I don't want this just to be another program, not just another episode, not just something on TV that entertains you. Rather, I believe that there's going to be power right now, grace. I did a series some time back called A Rush of Grace. The Spirit rushed upon David, and that same Spirit of God can rush upon you right now as you're sitting in your home, hospital, hotel, prison, wherever you are watching this program. And even if you've received the Holy Spirit in the past, in the Acts of the Apostles, it talks about how they were refilled over and over again. So who is this Holy Spirit? Revolutionizing power a rush of grace, abundant life, a personal relationship with God, not just an arbitrary force out there somewhere, but God himself. Remember, God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. Jesus said, if you know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give good things to those who ask? Luke changes that to, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit? Talk about good. The Holy Spirit is transformative and life-changing. And I'm praying that you will ask for this goodness that is the Holy Spirit. So they said that they hadn't even heard about the Holy Spirit. Well, that's interesting. In our Catholic Church, and I, I realize that some of you aren't Catholic, many of you, I, I hear from Baptists and Lutherans and Methodists and Charismatics and non-denominationals and Catholics. I'm not trying to make anybody Catholic. I'm just trying to bring you into a close relationship with Jesus. I believe that our denomination has the fullness of truth, but worship wherever you want. Go to any church. And I pray that you will be filled with the Holy Spirit as you do. So in our Catholic church, we have heard about the Holy Spirit, but unfortunately, many people don't know who the Holy Spirit is. For example, we pray as we begin Mass in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well, that's how Mass begins. Then, as the priest greets the congregation, he says, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And that's how we, we begin Mass. We greet the people with that greeting, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And to me, that is such an important greeting. By the way, that comes right from the Bible. That's how Paul greeted the Corinthians. And it's such an important greeting because the communion of the Holy Spirit is the primary reason why the Holy Spirit was given to us. You see, God wants intimacy. God wants union. God wants communion with his people. And I want you to know that you can have a relationship with God that is more than just God is a force out there somewhere, an arbitrary force kind of in the heavens somewhere. No, God is closer to us than we are to ourselves. The communion of the Holy Spirit means intimacy. It means oneness. It means a, a depth relationship. And this revolutionized 
my life as a teenager. I was born and brought up Catholic, wasn't really going to church after many years of going to church, fell away. And then as I started to ask, remember, if you know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? I began asking for grace, asking for wisdom, asking for God himself. And then I was touched by the Holy Spirit. Not right away, takes time. You gotta keep seeking and asking and knocking. And then eventually I had this filling, you could call it, this touch, this awakening, this rebirth, if you will, this new consciousness, awareness of the Holy Spirit that revolutionized my prayer life. And I say my prayer life because, you know, in prayer, we're not just trying to talk to God, we're trying to relate to God, to have something real and deep and intimate. And this changed me because Previously, God was just kind of out there somewhere, but then when the Holy Spirit touched me, God was real and personal, something close, something intimate, and that's what I want for all of you. So we have heard about the Holy Spirit. After the greeting and uh, the communion of the Holy Spirit, Jesus told us to pray for this. And then, Remember, in the Gospel of Luke, he said, if you know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? Remember, God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. And because he's good, merciful, and gracious, and slow to anger, full of steadfast love, he will give. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. Well, he'll give his beautiful Holy Spirit too. When we ask the Holy Spirit to come upon these gifts, the gifts of bread and wine, that's called the miracle of transubstantiation. And bread and wine, we believe as Catholics, are turned into miraculously, turned into the very body and the very blood of Jesus Christ. There's a change that happens there. And as a priest, I mediate that. It's called the epiclesis the calling down of the Holy Spirit upon the gifts. Well, in the same way, the Spirit comes to change us, not, in, not into wine, not into the body of Christ, but to change us, to transform us. Notice the term Holy Spirit. Number one reason why the Spirit comes is to give us intimacy with God and then to sanctify us. That means to make us, to transform us, to change us, to give us virtue, to make us courageous, to help us to be patient, to help us to be loving and merciful. So the Spirit comes to change us. So we've heard of the Holy Spirit. I'm talking about a few things at Mass, but many people don't know the Holy Spirit, and that's what was going on with the Ephesian church. They said, we haven't even heard that there is a Holy Spirit, but we have a leg up on them because at least we've heard about the Holy Spirit, but I want the Holy Spirit to be more than just theology. I want it to be experiential for you. I have many resources that you can check out at my website. I have free booklets called A Revolution, An Experience, Rebirth. These are booklets that you can download. And then of course my book, Glorious Holy Spirit, that many people have bought. Second book that I've written called Glorious Holy Spirit, because when you start to, to know the Holy Spirit, what happens is you experience comfort. Remember, the Spirit is called the Comforter. And part of the comfort that comes is this, this glory, this electricity, this beautiful pleasure from God. And I want you to experience that. I want you to know that you're not alone, especially if you're going through a divorce or old age, or a physical sickness of some sort, or a breakup, or problems with money, all the difficulties that people have in life, I want you to know that you're not alone. That's the beautiful promise of the scriptures. Jesus said, I am with you wherever you go. And he's with us through the Holy Spirit. So at Mass, many different parts of the Mass have to do with the Holy Spirit. I talked about the introduction, the epiclesis coming upon the gifts. 
And then at the Creed, the wonderful Nicene Creed from the year 325 AD that talks about our faith in the Holy Spirit. And it says, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life. So the Spirit is not just a, a force or a power, but the Spirit is that. The Spirit is Lord. <clears throat> the Holy Spirit is the person of God. We believe in what's called Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is a, a person of the Trinity. So in other words, the Spirit is, is God himself breathed into us so that we can live forever. And you can actually come to know the very person of God in the depths of your heart. And then the Spirit brings what I call illumination. The Spirit comes with all kinds of different gifts, knowledge and counsel and understanding and fortitude and piety, all these beautiful gifts. But one of the gifts is called illumination. Let me talk to you about it this way. I remember one of our saints in our church, St. Vincent Pilati, when he was a student, he was studying, but he was really having trouble with his studies. And as he was having trouble with his studies, his mother said to him, Vincent, pray to the Holy Spirit to help you. This is good for all students. So what he did is he prayed for help for the Holy, from the Holy Spirit, and the Spirit touched him in a powerful way, and be, he became a star student. This knowledge, this illumination, this help of the Holy Spirit. Remember, one of the terms for the Holy Spirit is the paraclete, that means the helper. And so I think about the saints in our tradition, saints like St. Catherine of Siena, who has been canonized a saint and a doctor of the church, or St. Teresa. These women weren't well educated, and they became saints, and not only saints, doctors of the church. Only a few women in the history, the 2,000 year history of the Catholic Church have been uh, doctors of the church. The Holy Spirit lavishes these gifts upon people. And I want you to know that the Spirit can bring illumination into your life and knowledge and understanding and help with the decisions that you have, the everyday decisions. There are many images of the Holy Spirit in the Catholic Church too. For example, in St. Peter's Basilica, there's that beautiful alabaster window of the Holy Spirit. You'll see a dove, and I love it when the light comes through. It's, it's heavenly. And the Spirit, of course, is portrayed as a dove because the Spirit is gentle and innocent and pure. I remember it was back in 1986 that an encyclical was written by Pope John Paul II at that time, now St. John Paul II. He wrote an encyclical called Lord and Giver of Life, and it was about the Holy Spirit. Now, the, an encyclical is one of the highest teachings of the Catholic Church. And in this encyclical, he said some very interesting things. He said, faith in the Holy Spirit needs to be reawakened and deepened in the consciousness of the people of God. And I love that. He's talking about an awakening. And if you know anything about the 12-step program, I did a series on the 12-step program recently, the reason for the 12-step program is to bring people into sobriety, but most of all, it's so that they'll have an awakening with God. And that's exactly what we need when it comes to the Holy Spirit, a new consciousness, a new awakening with the Holy Spirit. You can have that. No matter how long you've been religious, no matter how long you've been going to church, no matter how long it doesn't seem like things have been working for you, or possibly you're just flipping into the program and you don't know Jesus and you haven't been going to church, you can have an awakening with the power of the grace of God because God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. And he's good to everybody. And so Pope John Paul II said that after Vatican II, we need to have a new study of the Holy Spirit. I believe what he was saying is people don't just need to study and know theologically about the Holy Spirit. They need to have some type of an encounter this is what revolutionized my life and changed my life and called me from really having been fallen away from the church to becoming a Catholic priest. I'm believing that you're going to have an encounter with the Holy Spirit right now. There's grace being mediated through this program. God is speaking to you. 
And God wants to touch your life. It was right after Vatican II, this is back in the 60s, right after the Pope had talked about this and that they wanted people to have a new consciousness, a new awakening with the Holy Spirit. 1967, Duquesne University, this is in Pittsburgh, group of students, young people, and oftentimes God will touch young people in a powerful way and older people. It says that in the last days, your young people will see visions and your old people will dream dreams as God pours out his spirit. So it's for young and old and everybody in between. But a group of young people were gathered and they were on retreat and nothing was happening. Kind of like that woman that I talked about with her prayer life and she felt stuck. So one of the women on retreat, Patty Mansfield Gallagher, wrote on the chalkboard, we need a miracle. And then don't you know that during that retreat, God lavished his spirit, just as he said in the Bible. It says that upon all flesh, God will pour out his spirit. John 3, God pours his spirit out without limit. Maybe in all those children, all those young people were touched in a very powerful way and began the charismatic renewal in the Catholic Church. And I'm not trying to say that you have to be charismatic. I'm not trying to make you a charismatic. But I believe it's normative for all Christians, all believers, that you experience the, the abundance, the grace, the intimacy, that is the Holy Spirit. That Jesus died for you to have that. Jesus wants you to have that. And you might be thinking, well, I'm too old now. I'm past my time. Or I'm not worthy. I haven't been going to church. Let me tell you the story about the Samaritan woman. You've heard about this from the Bible. This is John chapter 5. Here's this woman of Samaria, and Jesus is at a well, and he's thirsty, and he, this woman is coming to get some water, and he says, give me to drink. And then they get into this dialogue, and Jesus offers her living water. That's another symbol for the Holy Spirit. I already talked about the dove. Living, what, you know what water is? It, it brings thirst-quenching life. It brings renewal. It brings healing. It brings refreshment. Jesus is saying, if you knew who I am and what I'm offering you, you would ask him and he would give you living water. And notice who he's offering this living water to. Not just a woman in that society, usually women were lesser than the men. He's offering it to a woman who had been divorced five times. The woman is now living with somebody who's not her husband. So in other words, here's this divorced woman living in sin, and Jesus is saying, I'm offering you the Holy Spirit. Wow. So what I'm saying is, don't be thinking that you're not worthy because if you're hearing the sound of my voice, Jesus is offering this to you. Whether you're a woman, a man, old, young, and everything in between. I remember the story really quickly in the Old Testament. Moses was being burdened with leading the people out of Egypt. And there were so many people that he needed help. So God told him, gather 70 together, and I'm going to take some of the Holy Spirit that's on you and give it to them. And so they're all gathered, and the Spirit's poured out, and they're touched, and they're speaking in tongues. It was a beautiful... Well, two of them weren't there. Eldad and Medad weren't, weren't in the camp. And they received the Holy Spirit even though they weren't there. And somebody came in and said, Hey, Eldad and Edad are speaking in tongues, and they weren't even a part of the gathering. And Joshua said to Moses, Forbid them to do that. And Moses replied in a very beautiful way. He said... I'm not going to forbid them. He said, would that God would bestow his people upon, bestow his spirit upon all people. So in other words, Moses knew it. Jesus proclaimed it. That God is good all the time and all the time God is good. And because God is good, he wants to lavish his spirit upon you. So whether you've been going to church or not, whether you've been a part of the gathering or not, you can receive the Holy Spirit, I believe, as you're watching this program right now. And I'm going to pray for that to happen. All you, all you need is faith. Believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life. Jesus died on the cross for you to have abundant life, eternal life, a life that begins right now and continues into eternity. This is what salvation is, knowing who the Holy Spirit is. 
And so let me pray that the gentle, wondrous, loving, gracious Holy Spirit will fill your empty places, that you will receive in the depths of your heart a revolution, a rebirth. Whether you feel anything or not, be touched by the Holy Spirit. Something new, a change in you, you're going to be different. There's power, there's intimacy, there's grace for you. I want you to be filled with the grace of God because God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Don't just live, live with passion. I hope you are touched by the grace of the Holy Spirit. I wrote a book called Glorious Holy Spirit. I'm so hoping you will get that book. It will talk about intimacy with the Holy Spirit. It will talk about personal change through the Holy Spirit. It will talk about becoming a new identity in the Holy Spirit. You've got to read this book. It will really help you. By the way, just to share with you, I got this letter from a person in prison. He said, this is a dark place. Discouragement, unbelief, your teaching has brought illumination, light, and encouragement. That's exactly what the Holy Spirit does, brings illumination, light, encouragement. No matter what you're going through, you can receive grace. I want you to be filled. I want you to know God in a personal way that you're on the way to heaven through the Holy Spirit, the beginning of eternal life, the abundant life that Jesus came to bring. Whenever you buy any of my resources, this book, Glorious Holy Spirit, this series, God is good all the time, all the time, God is good. It supports my ministry so that I can broadcast Live With Passion throughout the world, everywhere. Thank you in advance for your donations, for your purchases. Please call that number right now, write me at that address, go to my website, you'll be glad that you did, and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Don't just live, live with passion. God is good all the time, all the time, God is good. Experience God's greatness. Boost your spiritual life. Realize a revolution of grace. Right now, simply call or go online and order Series 620 DVD or CD, as well as the book Father talked about. People everywhere are being transformed by Father Cedric's teachings. You too can experience renewal and the power of the Holy Spirit. Every purchase supports Father Cedric in his God-given mission to touch lives and save souls. Father Cedric is a Catholic priest with a professed vow of poverty. To order these inspiring resources, simply call 844-FATHER-C, 844-328-4372. An operator will help you. Or write Father Cedric at 430 Bunker Hill Road, Houston, Texas, 77024. Or log on to www.frcedric.org and purchase online. Simple, easy, and confidential. Thank you in advance for your generosity. Together, we are touching lives and saving souls.